Today I'll be going over the interactions between hepatic cytochrome P450 enzymes that can either induce or inhibit the metabolism of certain drugs. And we know that this metabolism process in the P450 can alter the concentration levels of certain drugs. In this video, I'll go over the medications that also causes depression or possibly mania. Towards the end, we'll go over some practice questions. Let's start off with inhibitors. When you look at the word inhibitors, you see there is HI, HI in the word inhibitors. And that should help to remember what inhibitors do. I have the word inhibitor and HI is colored in red to help you remember that it's high. Inhibitors increase. It increases the drug level. How? Well, it decreases the processing of the drug or there's a decrease in the activity of the drug. So when that takes place, there is a buildup of the drugs. It's too much drugs in the system, which means that this drug clearance is much slower. So that leads to the drug being toxic in the system. Remember, the drug level is opposite to the metabolism. The test taker may be asking about the drug level versus the metabolism, so become familiar with it. Inhibitors increase the drug level because there is a decrease in metabolism, and that is leading to the toxic levels of the drug in the system. So moving on forward here, I have inducers, and you know that inducers is spelled with the letter D in it. D is for decrease. Inducers decreases the drug level. The reason is it's decreasing because the drug is being processed super fast, or in other words, there is an increase in drug metabolism. So there is not enough drug in the system. There's a decrease in drug, and this is where you would see someone have subtherapeutic levels of drug in the system. The following are the inhibitors, bupropion, clomipramine, cementidine, clarithromycin, fluoroquinolones, omeprazole, grapefruit juice or grapefruit, ketoconazole, nefazidone, and SSRIs. To help you remember the inhibitors, here is a mnemonic. Be caring because COVID feels overwhelmingly gross. Keep Nana safe. As you can see, the first letter of each word from the mnemonic represents the inhibitors. Some test takers like you to know the associations with the different subtypes, such as 2D6 or 1A2. So take notes. I've only put the ones you really need to know and focus on. Here are the list of inducers. Carbamazepine, ox carbazepine, St. John's wort, phenytoin, phenobarbital, tobacco, oral contraceptives, methadone, antiretroviral, cyclosporins. To help you remember the inducers, here's a mnemonic. Come see pumpkin pie tomorrow or Monday and ciao. So listen up. I know there are many mnemonics that is out there to help you memorize the inhibitors and inducers. Guess what? You choose the one that works best for you. And on this slide, I have both the inhibitors and inducers listed. What works best for me is knowing the categories of drugs. And I mainly focus on the inducers here because everything else most likely be an inhibitor. So the first one I have is especially for psych. So the first one that I have here is NDRI is the drug category, and that is Wellbutrin. Wellbutrin is also known as bupropion. Also note, especially for psychiatry, we commonly give patients Depakote and lithium. Depakote and lithium are inhibitors. Also SSRIs, they're very common inhibitors in psychiatry. I know previously in the mnemonic I had mentioned clomipramine, Note that this is a TCA, and TCAs, it's not just specifically that TCA, but it, there are other TCAs in general that are inhibitors. So I have the category TCA to help you remember that. So I have also anti-tuberculosis agents such as isoniazid or rimfampin. These are all examples of the anti-TB medication, right? So that's there. Also what is there is Prilosec. Now Prilosec, you should know that that's a PPI, proton pump inhibitor, you also have cementidine, which is a H2 blocker. So I know H2 blockers, PPIs, any drug that the test taker might be giving me, I would know those are all inhibitors. A lot of the antibiotics, as you can see, is listed as an inhibitor. You also have the grapefruit juice. Note that there is also cranberry juice. So this is when you would want to make sure that you're not giving a patient cranberry juice or grapefruit juice early in the morning because they're getting their morning meds. This is going to alter their medication, right? There is antidepressants, that is nefazidone. I had previously mentioned. So on both categories, alcohol is listed. Inhibitors have alcohol and inducers have alcohol. Now note that it is acute 
in inhibitors and it inducers it's chronics so real quick guys i really try to focus on the inducers and um, i know when i focus on the inducers everything else would be inhibitors for me most likely and so for the inducers i try to remember carb and barb together as siblings and when i think of barb it helps me to also remember phenobarb and phenytoin so there you have the first four carb barb phenobarb and phenytoin Next, I try to remember St. John's Swart because that's the oddball. And then there is rimfampin. Rimfampin is the antibiotic. And the antifungal is the griseofluvin. Very important is knowing cigarette smoking and oral contraceptives. These are very common inducers and very high yield test taking questions come up on that as well. So guys, let's be real. I know the test takers are smart, but I know you are smarter and you got this. So here I share some common medications that induce depression or mania. So the reason being is because sometimes the test takers like to test and see if you are adjusting medications because it's an inhibitor or inducer, or are you adjusting medication because it causes depression or mania? So pay attention to the question and what the question is really asking. So on this slide, Medications that induce depression are steroids. They also cause mania, as you can see, right? So depression can be caused by steroids, beta blockers, interferon, isotretinoin, and some retroviral drugs. Also, it can be caused by antineoplastic drugs. It also can be caused by benzodiazepine. So you might see somebody who is using Ativan continuously that it causes depression long-term. Um, progesterone also causes depression. Well, let's look over to the side of mania. What causes mania? The drugs that cause mania are steroids. Again, disulfuram, that's used for alcohol, anti-abuse, right? Isoniazid, antidepressants, especially in people who have bipolar disorder already because you're not going to be prescribing a bipolar person antidepressant because it's going to put them into mania. So antidepressants. So let's do some practice questions. If you have a patient that is on lithium and on NSAIDs, what would you do? You know that lithium and NSAIDs will increase lithium level. So what are you going to do? You're going to decrease the lithium, right? Because you don't want lithium. There is severe toxicity to that. So, And lithium is also an inhibitor. So you want to make sure you decrease lithium. Okay, next. Lithium and diuretics. What would you do? Lithium and diuretics will increase also the lithium levels. And what are you going to do? You're going to decrease the lithium. Okay, so let's do Zyprexa and nicotine. What do we do? Hmm. Zyprexa and nicotine will decrease Zyprexa because nicotine is a inducer. What are you going to do? You're going to increase the Zyprexa because when the patient is smoking, nicotine is going to be decreasing the Zyprexa. So you want to increase because the medication is not being effective, right? There is subtherapeutic levels of Zyprexa. You want to increase the Zyprexa. You have a patient who recently quit smoking and is on Zyprexa, let's say. What are you going to do? You're going to decrease Zyprexa. So let's say you have a patient that's on carbamazepine and oral contraceptive. What do you know? These two are inducers, and 3A4 is induced by carbamazepine, affecting oral contraceptive level, as well as the level of the carbamazepine, which is what known as Tegretol, right? So this will decrease the birth control pill that the patient is taking, and you would want to do med adjustment. What are you going to do? You could either discontinue the medication, or you might want to decrease the dose of the carbamazepine. Okay, guys, let's do five more. Carbamazepine and erythromycin. What do we know? Carbamazepine is an inducer or an inhibitor? It's an inducer. What about erythromycin? Is that an inhibitor or inducer? That's an inhibitor. So know that an inhibitor and an inducer, which one is going to take priority? It's always going to be inhibitor, okay? Inhibitor takes priority over the inducer. In this case, it always wins, okay? So what are you going to do? Let's see. So carbamazepine is going to get built up. Carbamazepine is going to get toxic level because of the erythromycin. That's an inhibitor, right? It's going to increase the tegretol levels. So remember, erythromycin, it inhibits the carb. So what are you going to do? You're going to decrease the carb, carbamazepine level. Let's do ibuprofen and lithium. We know this is also, again, a repeat, repeated question because you should know ibuprofen is uh, NSAID. And so NSAID and lithium, you know lithium wins, right? Because that's an inhibitor. 
it increases the lithium level or you can say it doubles up, right? So you want to be cautious. NSAID and ACE inhibitors, what would you do? You know that NSAID and ACE inhibitors, it inhibits, remember, it affects and can double the lithium level. So you got to be cautious with that, right? Let's say you have a patient that's on Flonase and Tegretol. What are you going to do? So there's so much of confusion going on with this one. And so let me make it clear. Flonase has steroids and steroids causes mania or depression. It can cause both, right? So what would you do with a patient on Tegretol? You would increase it because now you're putting the patient that is on Flonase possibly at risk for depression or even mania. So you're going to do increase of Tegretol. Honestly, don't confuse yourself with inhibitor and inducer. See what the question is asking. Yes, Flonase has steroids and steroids can be an inhibitor, but the quest taker is asking you, is it causing depression or mania versus, you know, are you doing med adjustment because there it's an inhibitor or inducer? They're not going to be putting the same medication to confuse you guys. Last but not least, let's do birth control pills, right? So that's oral contraceptives and lamictal. What are you going to do? You're going to induce what? We know birth control pills are inducer and that's going to decrease the level of a lamictal, right? So you're going to increase the lamictal medication because it's decreasing the lamictal. You're going to increase the lamictal for the patient. So guys, real quick, before I end this slide, I did want to go back to the Flonase and Tegretol question. Know that the Flonase is, what is it? It's going to be a PRN medication. It's not going to be a standing medication for the patient. So are you really going to take a PRN over a standing medication and do a med adjustment? No. And especially for this question, um, you would be increasing the Tegretol because the Flonase can affect either mania or depression. So you're doing the med adjustment mainly because of that. You're increasing the Tegretol because of that, not necessarily because of an inhibitor or inducer. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had lots of fun making this for you. If you need more information, feel free to get in touch with me through my email under about. Don't forget to leave a comment. If you have any video suggestions, let me know. I would love to hear from you.